So in this lesson, we're going to discuss some things that are new and different in AngularJS. Now, before I get into this, I'm going to talk about my development environment a little bit. I'm running Ubuntu 13.04, which is the latest release, and my text editor is Sublime Text. Now, you don't have to use these because pretty much any combination of operating system and dev environment works as long as you can edit files, view them in the browser, and serve them from some local server. It's also worth mentioning that for those of you that are unfamiliar with it, the Ubuntu window switcher will be used frequently in my lessons. I really like it because it lets me show stuff in the full screen as opposed to having to cram them into one window. Usually I'll have here my browser, I'll have my text editor, so my text, and I'll have my terminal. One more thing I'll mention quickly is that when I'm changing between files and Sublime Text as opposed to clicking on tabs, I will be using the Control P macro to change them so I can just type in the name and then it'll go to that file. So when you see this, that's what I'm doing, just so you know. Let's get into some AngularJS. What makes Angular different? Well, that's a big question and there are a lot of answers to it. Most of all, Angular is an incredibly modular framework. Now, while this doesn't make it different, design decisions that come out of extreme modularity are really interesting. We'll be talking about them in a little bit. Just remember that the way Angular is constructed, it's supposed to be as efficient as possible. Dependencies aren't injected or included when they're not necessary. You should have code only in files where it's relevant. Everything should be split up. Everything is built around an extremely elegant framework, and you will see this very clearly very soon. What else makes Angular different? Well, for one, data binding. This isn't the only JavaScript framework that does data binding, but Angular does it in an interesting and very efficient way. By data binding in Angular, that means that the data that you see in the view is in real time synchronized with the data that Angular sees in the model. So whatever data Angular is interacting with in the model, it's the same data you are seeing presented in the view. And this binding is done two ways. So if you change it in Angular, it will be reflected in real time to the view and vice versa. So if it's changed in the view, it'll be synced to Angular. That's important to remember. Something else that's also interesting about Angular is that it uses plain JavaScript. This is good for a number of reasons. One is that inclusion of third-party libraries is relatively simple. There's very little you need to do to make it work in tandem with Angular, and this makes it really nice. In terms of deep linking, you see here, this is a problem that is introduced with single page applications because when you first serve the page, there's really no difference between using a traditional server rendered view and a single page application. All the assets are served together or asynchronously or whatever. But when you change routes after the initial load is when the difference happens. So with a traditional server one, the request hits the server, it'll generate whatever view files, whatever it needs, and it'll return that. But in something like Angular, which is a single page application that doesn't happen, it handles all the routing within that single page. So although it looks like to the user that you're changing views, you're not actually changing the page. The problem that is introduced is when you try on a first load to access a deep linked page, as it's called, where if you were to try and load initially slash users slash Bob, for example, if you were to try to do that in initial load, that's going to hit the server. And unless you take care of it, the server isn't going to know what to do with that route because the server isn't set up to handle routes. It's all handled in the front end. When you set it up correctly in Angular, Angular takes care of this entirely. So all you have to do is make sure the server knows what to do when it sees these initial page load routes and it defers all of the handling to Angular, which is really awesome. And it's done with total transparency. You don't need to worry about any of this. Form validation is really big in Angular. There are a lot of really neat tools we'll get into later that allow you to simply validate forms without writing too much boilerplate code. It's worth mentioning that although you can do the validations in Angular, the same as with any JavaScript framework, you can't only validate in JavaScript because the user is assumed to have control of the entire execution environment. Another thing is server communication. Angular offers services, which you don't need to worry about what those are right now, but essentially they're going to let you talk to external APIs and stuff like that really easily with the HTTP service and the resource service. And we'll get into that in later lessons. Directives are a huge part of Angular. They're completely unique to Angular. No framework, as far as I know, uses this type of thing. And directives, the way they're described, is custom HTML syntax. They're pieces of HTML that you're going to put in and encapsulate some sort of functionality that you're going to want to reuse. 
and they allow you to create what's really unique to Angular, which is declarative HTML. And this is a really interesting way to create your views. It's a really unique way of handling functionality that you want to reuse in the view. And we'll talk about that more in a second. Dependency injection. This is another extension of the Angular modularity concept where dependencies within Angular are injected, which is a rather complex topic that we'll touch on later, but it's a unique way of providing services and other things to pieces of the application that need them. And finally, testable. Angular is extremely testable. Now, it's almost a shame that this is introduced last in this page because Angular from day one has been written to be an incredibly testable framework, and this is core to the way that the Angular core team has built Angular in the sense that they've wanted everything about Angular to be incredibly testable, that it can be picked apart and tested in ways that are very simple and intuitive. We'll talk about more of this later, but it's important to remember that testability is fundamental to Angular. One more thing I should mention very quickly is that Angular is what I call jQuery agnostic, where DOM manipulation happens only in certain places, or rather should happen only in certain places. Users who come on that are used to jQuery tend to want to manipulate the DOM inside the controller, and you should actually not do this. This is not recommended. It's not a best practice for Angular. While Angular does use jQuery to manipulate the DOM, increasingly there are better ways to do animations and things like that, which you would traditionally do in jQuery to instead do it in Angular. And often you'll find that they will be cleaner and better implementations. So enough talk, let's get into some code. On the buildwith.angularjs.org page, there's a ton of projects that are all built in Angular, and a lot of them are open source. And I highly recommend looking through some of these because it gives you exposure to some production code in Angular. So I took the simplest one, Contact Path, and this is a great place to start. We're going to get into this. This is written, obviously, in AngularJS. First, let's analyze some data binding. So if you look at the source for this, you will see that this has an ng model attribute to it. And so this is the first example of using data binding in Angular. So if I type in the name Jake, we're not going to see anything happen. But something has happened. This is data binding in Angular. So as soon as I type Jake, the value of Jake is synchronized to the Angular model and Angular can immediately act upon that value. So it's immediately synchronized to Angular. And if Angular were to change it, it would be synchronized to the view. Also worth mentioning is the directive. So let's look at some Angular code now. So we can see that in the directives file, you don't have to worry about this syntax right here. The integer is the name of the directive. And so, a directive is descriptive HTML, and integer is exactly what we're going to use in the HTML, and it's used in the add view. Now, we don't really need to worry about what integer does, but you can see that it's added as an attribute to this input tag. And you might think, okay, well, this is compiled and then shipped off to the view differently. That's not the case. If you look at the phone element, you will see that integer is in fact present as an attribute. Angular knows what to do with this, and this is how directives are so powerful. Finally, dependency injection very quickly. You will see that in app.js where controllers are declared, this is a dependency injected parameter. So this is not a regular JavaScript function parameter. It's not passed in the same way as handled entirely differently. This dollar scope parameter is handled and delivered by AngularJS in a special way that we'll talk more about later, but it's important to understand the delivery method and that it's happening differently. So these have been some things that are new and different in AngularJS, and we will be going into more of them later.